Our co-chairs of the ZLC committee, uh, Dave Kubiak and Victor Guanyer, are going to kind of prepare us for those meetings and uh, update some of these projects. I always seem to get to the end of the meeting when everybody's exhausted. <laughs> did, you, did everybody get a copy of each of the There's the announcement of the meeting this coming Monday night in this room at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, the presentation by the developer of the Boston Project. Nice, and the meeting is sponsored by both the Neighborhood yeah. Council and the Residents Association. We typically had developers come in to our regular monthly meetings separately with the council and with the residents association. But we felt that this project in particular, but many of the other projects that will be built, I like to say, at our doorstep, are important enough that they shouldn't just be part of a much bigger agenda. It should be dealt with kind of individually individually separate from other issues affecting the North End, but not individually with respect to all of the projects that are being no. proposed in the area. This map and the table behind it, and I'm sorry that the print is so tiny on the back, but it had to be fitted off. This is a work in progress, as you probably noticed by taking a look at that table. Not all of the information is in there yet, but it's a good start. The main thing is the map. You can see that we've identified 10 sites where there will be, may, either has been or will be, major projects constructed between now and 2020. We're looking at about a six year period when all of these projects are going to be constructed. And these are all major projects. We're not even talking about all the smaller projects that are going to be going on around our neighborhood. So there's 10 projects there, and on the back is a table that identifies each of the projects, gives a project description, identifies, for instance, in the project description, the types of uses, office space, retail restaurant space, uh, housing, and hotels. And if you read through there, and it's not even complete yet, and you try in your mind to add up the number of people. We're talking about thousands of residential units. We're talking about a thousand hotel rooms. We're talking about many thousands of several, I'll say, uh, change that to several thousand office workers that are not now in the area of Haymarket, North Station, West End, that will be there by 2020. So many thousands more people will be in that area every day. Many of them many of them will have cars, despite what they like to say about uh, transit-oriented development. I like to say, yeah, we have we are creating transit-oriented development, but our, do we have development-oriented transit? Can our transit system really accommodate the number of people that the city says are going to use it. Also, the developers say, we're right next to I-93. Well, and, and so people will be able to get into those ramps very quickly and, and head off on the highway. Well, if that were the case, how come we have so much traffic coming over the Charlestown Bridge in the morning and circling around the North End to avoid I-93? And the same thing in the afternoon as well. Our key issue in the comments that NURA, and specifically the ZLC committee, has submitted so far on some of these projects has to do with can this area support that kind of development? The roadways, the transit system, the utilities, and if not, what are the impacts going to be? And to find out, to answer those questions, it's, it's not appropriate, it's not going to get you anywhere to have a developer of one of these projects come in, like we had, what, a couple months ago, I think, with the, with the Government Center Garage project that you were here. 
That's one developer selling one project to the community. <coughs> Anytime you raise a question about the impacts as a whole, you're not, you're not going to get the answer from that one developer. You're not going to get those answers if you look at the huge, lengthy project impact reports that are being developed by each of these, by each of these developers. The only people that can answer those questions or should uh, be responsible for answering those questions are the city, particularly the Transportation Department, the Boston Redevelopment Authority, even the state MBTA, MassDOT, they need to be coming into the communities and showing why this development is appropriate in this area and, and, and convince us that the area can support all of that. Just driving home today uh, to the North End from work, I, uh, I ran into huge traffic problems along North Washington Street. We were told by the Boston Garden Project developer that the area has been designed for this huge development. Mm -hmm that the Central Artery Project reconfigured the roadways to allow for all of this. And if that were the case, why do we have problems now, even before these developments are built? Craziest thing of all was to create that U-turn to get people from a tunnel up on the ground and back into a tunnel to go to, uh, to, go to I-93 from, say, the Harbor Tunnel system craziest thing in that in particular was all backed up, all backed up today. Now we have a public school for kids, young kids, right next to what I think we all think that was one of the worst intersections in the city of Boston, the intersection of Causeway Street and North Washington Street. I've heard that the city has plans to reconfigure that intersection to make it safer. Will those plans be, what are those plans, and will those plans be implemented as part of this development? Will they be in place when all of these developments are in place and all of those people are in that area? Will the Charlestown Bridge be uh, rehabilitated? The plans have been around for at least 10 years, maybe longer than that. I've heard there's some kind of a fight between the state and the city over who's really responsible for for fixing that bridge. We know that that bridge has been compromised, the structural uh, capacity of it has been compromised for decades. And I'm waiting for the day, because I know it happens all the time, when that bridge is going to have to be completely shut down. And only then will government make a decision to do something about it. But in the meantime, what is that going to do to traffic in this area? It's already, the capacity of that bridge is compromised by at least a third at this point. Those two lanes in the center have been taken out. And we need at least those two lanes to be back in service before these developments are built. So this isn't just a matter of heights of buildings and shadow impacts. There's all those issues as well. But a key concern that we keep raising is we see the private investment side of all of this, but where is the public investment side 